Hello there, my fellow tour guides, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. Today, as I promised in the last couple of Nippon videos, we're gonna explore some major cities of this great realm. However, this time I wanted to try a slightly different approach when it comes to pictures. Because most, if not all of these cities are based on actual Japanese cities, I'm gonna try to mix in some real pictures of those cities too. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The towns and cities of Nippon are situated close to the Shogun's own province. The further one goes away from the capital, the more scattered the towns become, as wealth concentrates in and around the Shogun's province, and the provinces of the exalted families. Riots and dissenting are not wholly uncommon in towns and cities although they are usually repressed ruthlessly. In the cities and the bigger towns, the civilian population has developed several professional classes that consist mainly of a number of ruling landlords, wealthy wholesalers, and moneylenders, who then lord over the various guilds and corporations of merchants, craftsmen, tenant farmers, and servants. At the bottom of this social ladder are the entertainers, porters, foreigners, and the destitute. The first of today's quite many cities is Usaki, which I believe is based on the well-known city of Osaka. The Kamato region is the spiritual birthplace of Nippon, where the first emperor ruled thousands of years ago. The very first settlers of Koshu came to this region, and it is believed that Usaki was one of the very first settlements in Nippon. It is a prosperous city and has arguably the best centers of education in the whole nation. The fortified mansions of the great lords lie perched upon the steep hills, where it is said that the occupants keep an eye on the citizenry, because the shogun's bakufu or government have residences there. The imperial palace of Usaki itself lies in a flat basin. Surrounding it are hills where the garrisons of the shogun's troops are stationed. The palace of the Emperor is garrisoned mostly by the Shogun's troops, but some of the Emperor's own household also helps to guard the walls and picturesque garden paths. Should have mentioned in the beginning that Usaki Castle is home to the Emperor and is the capital of Nippon. It is the largest castle of the nation, whose tall pagoda towers can be seen for miles. At regular intervals, the battlements are fixed with bolt throwers and the odd cannon. The many keeps of Usaki are home to the Great Guard, the most elite samurai in the entire realm. These soldiers accompany the Emperor to all places over Nippon. Underneath the castle are labyrinths containing many terrible and deadly traps, along with equally dangerous monsters and confusing illusions. This is the final training ground for the Emperor's and ninja assassins, who train in secret dojos throughout Kamato. The next city is Hyodo. Not certain what this one was supposed to be based of, but the closest I could find was Hyogo Prefecture, with the biggest city there being Kobe. Either that or it is simply based on Tokyo overall. To the east of the Kanto Yoshida Mountains lies the region of Edo. The entire western half of the region is nothing but volcanic ash. Centuries ago, Edo was the seat of the Emperor too, but now the Shogun resides here in the castle of Hyodo. It is also the second biggest castle of Nippon, and almost as impressive as Usaki. It lies upon a series of steep hills built in the traditional Nipponese way, whereby if one part of the castle is lost, it can be closed off relatively easily, thereby keeping the invaders away from the rest of the compound. But even then, surrounding the region is a set of moats and trenches, stretching some 9 miles in length. The innermost moat is 1.5 miles long, and their scarps are built up with colossal blocks of granite. Even the gardens within these walls, with all their sophisticated elegance, cannot conceal the military nature of the roads and paths leading to the central buildings. They constitute a labyrinth, whose very pattern is a closely guarded secret, and they pass beneath bridges, and are in many places lined with bastions, 
in such a way as to expose any unwanted guests, regardless of their number, to a concentrated attack with bows and arrows, crossbows and guns. The castle of the Shogun is more like a veritable city itself, with mansions to accommodate the daimyo, plus residences for the Hatamoto and the Gokenen, covering more than 180 acres. The next city is Omari, which might be based off Omori, a district of Tokyo. Omari is a hole for the Mushagi clan, and one of the greatest cities of Nippon. From here rules the daimyo Mushagi Nobuhide, who can often be seen standing watch personally on the castle walls, overlooking his busy city. Less than six centuries ago, Omari was nothing more than a port city, but ever since the rise of the Shogun, and being wealthier than other cities via maritime trade, it has grown in power and eminence. Now, after a set of long and bloody civil wars, from Omari, the famous free roads branch out for hundreds of miles, until they reach the great city of Tokaido to the west, Kumano to the north, and Hyodo to the east. The road into the west travels via the Celestial Portal, the road to Kumano travels via the Wagtail Portal, and the road to Izumo travels through the Moon Portal. As the chief trading port of Nippon, it boasts a mile-long wharf, from which a multitude of Yungs sail every day to other Nipponese ports and beyond. The port is a hive of activity, especially when a black ship comes, which is any merchant not of Nipponese or Cafean origin. Next we have Tokaido, which might or might not be based on an actual Japanese city, but on the region of Hokkaido itself, which is the northernmost big island of Japan. This is another port city, where one of the three roads ends. It lies in the Yoshida province at the top of the Gulf of Tokaido-1. From Tokaido Castle rules the daimyo Taneka Shengen, a distant cousin of Shogun Yorimoto Ieyasu. Travelers to Tokaido almost always enter via the Eastern Gate, known more commonly as the Shark Portal, although many of the fishermen will enter via the Tokaido-1. The fishermen do their work in the warmer waters of the Ishiguchi Nada and bring back plentiful stocks of shark. Nothing is wasted from these, as the fins and the teeth are used as well as the shark skin, which is used for some items of footwear and armor. The island off the coast of Yoshida, Mikurajima, is a place of thriving fishing villages too, but it is not an independent province and part of Yoshida itself. The best horses of the empire come from this region's ranches with a big part of them being sold to the shogunate armies. In part because of the city's association with the nation's military, canny farmers along the Moruto River have turned much of their rice crop over for the production of sake. Next we have Izumo, which I would say is based on the city of Izumi. Lying along the river Hita is the city of Izumo, the realm of the daimyo Ashiwara Kunichika. The city thrives on trade from the other major ports of Nippon, including Hyodo and even far away Okakama. The mudflats here form several small islands, and the farmers have exploited these in the forms of dozens of rice paddles. Where the earth is firmer is the castle of Izumo itself, just a little way up the river and away from the extensive rice paddies of the Ekawasaki Delta. The river passes through the town's woods and onwards to Lake Kiriko. It is possible for ocean-going vessels to traverse the waters of the delta, through Izumo, and then a little further up the river Ekawasaki. However, rarely do they travel more than 50 or so miles away from Izumo. Typically, the goods are brought and sold at the city, and the ships depart just as quickly as they arrive. Then there is the danger of fog. In the winter and the spring, sometimes, thick fog gathers enveloping the entire delta in pea soup making it next to impossible for anyone, who doesn't know the area well, to leave. Sometimes the fog moves until it threatens even the tiny island of Taranjima in the Izumo 1. But even without the fog, wrecks on this island are not uncommon, especially when there are dangerous reefs to avoid on the approach to the Izumo 1. As the granary of Nippon, the countryside of Izumo hosts the most productive rice paddies in the empire. The city itself has seen the coming and going of thousands of Tian immigrants, recruited to work as farmhands in the rich estates of the local lords. Next we have Tokaguchi. 
Now, I did find a Tokaguchi village, part of the Nagano prefecture, but, but other than that, the inspiration for this one, your guess is as good as mine. Tokaguchi is the seat of the Batake clan, led by the enigmatic Batake Ujimasa. A great fortress city, built on a favorable landing on an otherwise treacherous coast, the terraces of Tokaguchi climb the hills overlooking the narrow shoreline. The lowest of the terraces lean on the ruins of a stone fortress built thousands of years ago, where ancient stone walls adorned with reliefs of ancient warriors are almost entirely hidden by modern structures. Tokaguchi is famous for trading in silver and pearls. Silver is extracted from the nearby Kantosachi Mountains, where several fortresses protect the mines from bandits and evil creatures. Pearls are fished along the entire northwestern coast, where an abundance of coral reefs and natural lagoons favor the growth of oysters and conches. In the beginning, Tokaguchi grew rich on the copper mining activity in the hills south of town, and the manufacture of bronze items, which were then exported to Kasai together with the raw material required for the empire's coinage. With frightening unpredictability and varying organization, the Waco pirates attack ships as they leave the port of Tokaguchi, dragging metal goods and sailors alike to their hidden ports. In response, the city's patrols had grown into a veritable navy, captained by daring samurai and their students, who train endlessly in a variety of pole arms. Next we have Okakama, which I would dare say is based on the city of Okayama. Located in the subtropical west, Okakama is one of the major towns of that region, lying within the Wakakawa province, of which it is the capital. The ruler is one daimyo Uruchi Harumune. His castle lies three miles away from the coast, and can only be reached by walking along the river path, which is basically a pavement of stone slabs meandering this way and that until it reaches the gate of castle Okakama itself. This river path runs through a humid forest of evergreens, inhabited by a large population of macaque monkeys. They are no threat to people, but they are known to steal food from unwary travelers. The warm waters of Okakama 1 are home to coral fish, turtles, sea snakes, dugong, horseshoe crabs, giant spider crabs, and a thrilled shark. The town itself is basically a collection of villages along the coast of Okakama 1 but the town is still separated into wards, with gatekeepers stationed at appropriately placed intersections. The next we have Nagashige. I could be wrong on this one, but it might be based on actual Nagasaki. Sumata is a wealthy province on the northern end of Koshu. It is home to the Daimatsu clan, who has a long and impressive swordsmithing tradition. Its remote location and good trading links make it a good place for foreign trade though. Travelers usually come and go by ship, to the well-protected harbor, or along the road from Usaki. They are always checked by the gate wardens along the route for any discrepancies, like the absence of a sekisho or pass, and those who don't have one are usually dealt with harshly. Once you are inside the city, the traveler is met by a small patrol of doshin, and segregated town wards. At night, the wards are closed off by gates and anyone walking around after dark is arrested and detained. During daytime, Nagashige is quite pleasant, with farmers selling their rice at the market and artisans openly forging weapons in the street. There is a strong Otokodate presence in many of Nagashige's wards, which is why people here are seldom bothered too much by the doshin or police, although at night that changes dramatically. The prosperity of Nagashige is mirrored by its culture. Besides the rich shrines and temples, the town boasts a refined entertainment district that is famous both for its tea houses and theaters, which are second only to those in Kasai. The high standard of living of the town's middle class, coupled with the somewhat lenient attitude of the governor, has allowed the Yakuza to thrive in most of their traditional activities, especially in gambling. Finally for today, we have the city of Hiroshima, and this one might be the most obvious of all, based on Hiroshima. This is the major town of Haikido, lying within the Toyakita province. It is ruled by Daimyo Shinzei Watanabe out of castle Hiroshima. The castle itself lies upon a mountain of pine forests and steep ravines, 
and at the foot of one of these lies the town of Kiroshima itself. Like so many towns of Nippon, it is protected by a perimeter ditch filled with water and sharp stakes. The reason being is that there are more mutants and beastmen here than can be found in almost any other part of the main island. Maybe it is because of Haikido's cold climate that so many beastmen lurk in the forests, safe in the fact that a sparse human population does not venture out of their towns. Outside Kiroshima, the risk of being prey to these foul creatures that inherit Haikido grows considerably bigger. For that reason, not many people understand how the Shinzei can manage to survive there like they have all these years, for few are the merchants who dare travel there for trade. No wonder then, that they are known as the most secretive clan of Nippon. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to narrate for you today on all these cities of Nippon. I do think that some of these were more heavily inspired from actual existing cities than others, like Kiroshima or Usaki. I might have also gotten a couple of them wrong, so apologies in that case, and do feel free to correct me if you know better. Still, it was fun to learn about this aspect of Nippon's lore, and I dare say that this might be the most lore-rich coverage of a faction's geography that we've had so far. Of course, there's a lot of lore on the old world cities like Kislev or Nuln or Marienburg, but for a fan-made codex to go to this length was quite commendable in my opinion. If you enjoyed this, do leave a like, share, subscribe and click the bell icon for future content. Thanks a lot and the blessings of the Kami be upon you.